find out for real. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm going off. What's we're live. Do we have? It says we're live. What's what's that? What's that noise? Oh no! Perfect timing. Perfect timing. It's the siren. Yes, yeah. tornado. <laughs> the, thing. The, the Minnesota siren. <laughs> yeah. I can't That's believe awesome. I counted down to the Minnesota tornado <laughs> test yeah. siren. First uh, Wednesday of the month. Hello, Chub Frog. You say there's a technical glitch. What's up? Uh, I don't know. We are live now. Are we live? I, we are. We are this. live. I see us. We're on like a 10 second delay. <laughs> we are and on. Chub Frog's, okay. Chub Frog's comment was just about uh, Sean hitting F instead of G. It was a joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for the content. Well, then let's jump right in, I guess, right? Uh, so Anders is not here. Uh, and I think he's, he said he might make an appearance in the comments. Uh, yes, he said he'd be in the chat. Uh, thank you for the live confirmation, Sean Tilson. We are so new to this live thing. We were like, <laughs> "Wait, are we live?" Um, but yes, we had so, we had yeah. actually we had kind of hoped that our like three minutes of uh, pre-roll banter was going to make it on, but like we had to wait for YouTube's countdown to resolve for us to actually actually go live. Yeah, so yeah, now we're get... getting like thirty seconds of banter. Yeah, while well, you're getting this, we'll get this is all pre-show exclusive live pre-show banter <laughs> until Corey yes. does the real intro. <laughs> And yes, then, uh, and then we'll then we'll get into it. All right, there, so it seems like everything's working. Can we do it? Everything seems go? to be working fine to from okay. my eye. All right, let's do, it. Well, let's do it. Hit it, hit it, Corey. All right. Well, hello everybody, and welcome to the one and all. One, one, I'm sorry, I'm read. I read the script, and that doesn't count. <laughs> that's, a, that's a try run. <laughs> Second take. Again. Second take. And action. Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is Corey, and this is the Earthborn Games podcast. I'm taking over for our normal host, Anders Carlson, who can't make it on camera today, but he might show up in the chat channel. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, anyways, this is our 50th episode, and we are trying to do something special by doing something live, which we are completely new to and <laughs> trying to figure out how that works for future reference. And we have a full house today, except for Anders. We've got everybody. So let's go around the table. Everybody introduce yourselves. Uh, <laughs> are we introducing first? ourselves? Oh, yeah, okay. I, yeah. Or I guess I could do you it. You do um, it, yes. Yeah. I'm not as used to Anders' uh, way of doing things. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I come from a different podcast. <laughs> I'm Corey. I'm the marketing director here at Earthborn Games, and I am your temporary host. We got Andrew Fisher. Design Hello, director, everyone. yeah, cool guy, <laughs> soon to be bald. <laughs> soon to be bald, apparently. Yeah, what What are we at? What's the game found at, at actually, right now? Oh, we'll, uh, get, to look we'll, we'll get, get to that. We'll get to that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, um, sorry. Soon, soon to be bald, design director. Do yes. I have to go all the way bald? For, for people without context, the, the Discord wants me to cut my hair. I told them at $2.5 million, and we're definitely going to hit it, so uh, this hair is probably going away. We, but I don't yeah. have to go bald, right? I, I don't think we'll so. Out. That we'll, seems extreme. We'll take it up to the Discord. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, don't, don't leave this up to Chub Frog. I'm, I'm going to end I up know. with a flock of seagulls haircut. <laughs> <laughs> true. true. Um, we got Evan Simonette. Awesome art. Well, actually, I don't know, know your full title, but you're creative. Um, art visual thing. design director. Visual design director. Thank yeah. you. Um, just Also, just epic artist person. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I, got... I made my time here might be limited because my daughter's home from daycare sick and she's sleeping right now. And if she wakes up, I got a bail. So we'll, we'll She'll sleep. She... she will sleep like the baby she is. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> yes. It would be very inconsiderate if she woke up and <laughs> I'd have to ground her or something. <laughs> she wouldn't understand grounding because she's not even two yet. So that's awesome. No, that's great. Future, future grounded. Yeah. Yes. Future yeah. Grounded. When you're 10, you're going to be in so much trouble. Uh, Maxine Newman. Uh, new Hello. Lead yeah, new lead designer, uh, developer on Earthform Rangers. Yep, and uh, I, I have our other employee right here. <laughs> she she does contribute to quite a few meetings. She does, uh, she does, yeah. She's very vocal. Uh -huh. She has Maxine's, a lot of opinions. <laughs> Maxine's mic is right down by the cat tree, so we get like, we'll be, we'll be talking and you just get the contribution of like... Brruh. Oh, that's funny. Wait, is your cat so the good. one that's behind all the inspiration for the great game design, and you just haven't told us? Yes, she <laughs> she she comes up with all the ideas, and I just kind of channel it through me. You know, awesome. yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Oh, yeah. Well, and then of course, last but last but not least, 
if not most, <laughs> in Fruit of Arrow. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, every everything. You're a creative di- director. You're a head of studio. You're all the awesome uh, things. Uh, yeah, my, I think my title. We never. We usually don't g- give our titles. Uh, so I don't know if anyone knows, but yeah, it's a creative director and fo- and founder, creative director, founder, founder and creative that's director. Right. That is how it's in my email signature. So that's what it is. <laughs> that's what decides it. <laughs> <laughs> and green screen professional in Chub Frog's opinion, because you've never been in Costa Rica this whole time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's, uh-huh. it's a very, it's a, it's a very convincing it's highly uh, advanced fake back- yeah. backdrop yeah it's, it's unreal really... engine 5 it's very it's like, it's, like the, it's like the sets the sets that they use now that are like three yeah like yeah, yeah that yeah. Are like go all the I'm way in, around i'm in the volume yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is you're in the mandalorian that, set you're yeah. wondering where our 2.5 million dollars went it all went to andrew's volume <laughs> yeah yeah it's a good thing we got that money we did because I, I was here before we got that money so uh, they're about to come for me yeah we're actually here to make the podcast as high level of quality as possible that's not right. the game that's right uh, all right well since we're recording this episode live i'm going to keep an eye on the youtube live chat and fan discord so feel free to shoot any questions or comments as we go and uh share them because we'll respond especially if you have responses to uh uh, listener questions or other things later in the episode. And uh, yeah, let's jump right in. Uh, so let's start off with a game found update. Uh, Andrew, how is the game found going? Any updates for the people? Do I have to cut my hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, so it, yeah, the game found uh, is going really, really well. It continues to go well. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's the numbers keep going up. Uh, so we're sitting at about a little over 2.2 million raised, uh, just shy of 13,000 backers. Um, that's pretty incredible. Uh, so yeah, Fisher's hair has about two more months to live, I think, <laughs> before. It, it, whenever we charge shipping, it's done, no matter yes. what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, there's no, there's no way we're not going to hit 2.5. So, uh, say your goodbyes. Listen, you're just going to have to wait to charge shipping until I'm out. I've got this bottle of really expensive hair mask that for treating my hair. So you have to wait to charge shipping until I'm out of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to waste it. All right. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty exciting. Uh, the other update, I think last episode I talked about um, trying to get the pledge manager up. I, I Originally, I, wa- I was hoping that we'd, have the, that we'd close late pre- pledges and have the pledge manager going effectively now like being of april um but uh after i met with james which was like effectively immediate, immediately after that last episode uh i found out a little bit more information about what what the timeline is going to be so uh we recently just set out we recently sent out an email to uh, people who backed at the all-in level from the previous campaign uh and potentially backed <laughs> the new campaign uh possibly with a different email um so if you're an all-in backer from before and you backed with the same email address for the kickstarter that you did for the game found you would not have received this email uh but everyone who falls into that category potentially should have got an email to say hey uh if you back to the new campaign with a different email let us know because we need to know that information so we can set everything up uh, on the back end for the pledge manager before we launch it so um, we're just waiting on the information. And then once we, uh, the deadline for getting back to us is next Friday, the 12th. Mm-hmm. Um, so the idea is, is that hopefully we get any responses from that that we need. And then we're going to give that information along with the, all the other returning all-in backer information to uh, the folks at GameFound. They need to manually set up the back end so that when you come to the pledge manager in your cart if you're returning all in backer or someone who later added legacy of the ancestors in backer kit during the first campaign that you'll have legacy of the ancestors in your cart you'll also have a credit towards shipping uh and that will all be there uh when you log in so um that's the only thing we need to do i don't know how long that's going to take back game found to set up i'm hopefully not longer than like a week so uh ideally we'll launch the pledge manager by the end of this month but 
as soon as we get as soon as I get the notice from GameFound uh as to when they're gonna be ready to go with that, uh we'll send out a we'll send out an update to the game found to let people know that the late pledges are about to close and um pledge manager's gonna open up. So that's that's all the game that's all the game found update. <laughs> There's a lot happening. A lot yeah. happening there. But and uh, just like waiting around. It's just waiting. Of, yeah, for, we're just waiting. For, yeah. Yeah. We uh, felt like, you know, we need to give people enough time. I don't know how many responses we're gonna get to this. Uh if we get extra ones, people who you know are not sure that they if they use the same email address or not, like that's fine. That's not gonna break anything. So we might get some of those. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, so just a little bit a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, maybe we don't have to make you go bald, Fisher. Uh, I think I think that would be unfair. No, it's three, it's three million um, down to the yeah. skin. <laughs> uh, I've, I've done it before. I did a Dr. Manhattan. That's right. The, the, yeah. our, our, go, go check out our episode, Full New to Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's right. That's well, right. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I know how much it stinks to not have hair. So, uh, you know. Yeah, it could be like uh, that that Seinfeld episode where you shave your hair and then it won't come back. Oh, be, God. Be bald <laughs> oh, that would be awful. <laughs> uh, don't even joke about that. <laughs> no. All right. Well, then let's move on. Uh, so the Andrews and Maxine have been playtesting up a storm. Uh, Fisher, why don't you fill us in on how that's going? Yeah. Uh, since Maxine started, we've been... Uh, playing through all of legacy of the ancestors with her so we've been like playing almost every day um, yeah which has been really awesome mm-hmm. uh, this was a step andrew and i did on the core set which was kind of after a lot of every everything is in art final writing design we play it all together uh and identify places where like we had mismatches, right? Writing was written in one direction, art was written in another, and kind of unify it. So we're going to do this anyway, and then we can kind of double it up with Maxine coming on board so she can kind of see it all with fresh eyes and give her expertise and uh, get kind of a round of changes in before this goes off to the printer. So uh, we're on day... 10? 10? 10. I think so, uh, yeah. And it's been it's been going pretty well. We we had a couple we had some spooky moments today for sure. Yeah, uh, today we, was a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah we uh we played like right before this recording, so uh, it's <laughs> it's fresh. But we didn't we made it we made it we made it uh, yeah. And uh, overall, it's 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 been going really well. We've had like you know obviously we had a bunch of external play testing. Davi played through a whole solo campaign as did I, and so we've we've had a lot of like individual testing on a lot of this stuff but one of the nice things about this game is that we're getting a nice three-player game in which mm-hmm. a lot of our play testers just because of practicality are solo testers and you know sometimes they'll meet up and play together or sometimes they'll like play multiple hands themselves just to see what it's like with multiple players but getting a like true three-player game all campaign all the way through has been really good and really illuminating to how certain mechanics that, uh, scale or not See what um, she did there. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> totally on purpose. <laughs> it, honestly, we I don't think in the last two days we've we've gotten uh much illumination. We needed some illumination and we didn't have any. We, uh, have, we, have good we always have it when today. we don't need it and we don't have it when we need it. <laughs> yeah. I think we had we had it today we needed. We were able to scout some yeah, cars because of it. True. Like it worked out pretty well. I, I th- yeah, I think this has been really fun because I almost I, I, the number of times I've played three players so low, like mm-hmm. so being able to play so many sessions three players really has been really fun. Um, and man, that f- that fungal forest set three player, <laughs> which is what we did today. Uh, man, that was there's fun. A, there's a lot happening. It was so cool. Uh, there's, there's so, so many, many cool things. interactions. Yeah, yeah. It well, just the fungal, out so the many fungal of those forest things. It is already up here, and then we, the location <laughs> we were at really stepped it up another notch. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is my first time playing three players, so it's 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 like a whole new world for me. And of course my first time playing the expansion, so <laughs> yeah. Sean 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 asks how we're play play testing. Yeah, I was gonna um, say. Yeah. It is we are using TTS since uh as as you say, since uh uh Andrew is down <laughs> in Costa Rica. It's basically a necessity. We could supposedly. 
<laughs> yeah, allegedly. So he's in the volume. Uh, he, he won't leave his volume, so I guess That's we right. have to use TTS. Uh, <laughs> we could play via webcams, but TTS is just easier. Mm -hmm. Though to be honest, like we were having a bunch of problems with Andrew's Max performance on TTS. I mean, not that the program's the most optimized thing in the world, but today, <laughs> so knock on wood, it's been way better. <laughs> yeah, today it, was, yeah. it worked perfectly. It was like it was... You know, like I have an expensive computer that's supposed to be able to run something like TTS. <laughs> it it was kind of funny because like he's la he was lagging so bad he could still play, but like he couldn't quite interact with things correctly, <laughs> yeah. and like his hand would like stutter across the board. So it was kind of like you, you know like. You're like playing with that elderly relative, and you're like, "Okay, here, let me help you out, Andrew. Let me yeah. just get that card. I'm for just you. gonna set this card for you. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Here's this token. Yep. yep. <laughs> so like, there's almost nothing I could do. Like, it was took all my energy just to like move my energy tokens back onto my card to start the round. Or <laughs> yeah. Slowly yeah, suffering like, fatigue mm -hmm. as I have to like drag it off down one direction, then over so it doesn't accidentally grab my discard pile. <laughs> oh, just awful. <laughs> so yeah, today it was great. It was just like uh it was a whole it was a whole new world. It felt awesome. Um so yeah, the that whatever that OS update I did this morning clearly did the <laughs> trick. I uh I have a friend who I play with a lot of TTS and he always has a VPN on. Uh and uh it's the same thing. I'm like if if I'm not hosting and he's hosting, I need him to just do everything for me. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I feel like a chess person who's just saying the like you know, knight B five to you know, and then like the game does it. You know, like, uh -huh. it's so stupid. No, you just you just you embrace it. You just lean back. You tell yeah. him, and you just talk to your friend like computer. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to traverse the location. Computer. Yeah. Draw yeah. three cards for me, please. <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel especially powerful in a competitive game. To <laughs> telling your opponent to do all these things for you. Yeah. Deal Could you go, ahead and, yeah. Could you go yeah. ahead and take 10 damage for me, please? Thank you. <laughs> please. Yes. Thank you. So, yeah. Fisher, tell, tell me about your, tell, well, both of you, like, let's, let's share what our, uh, what our decks are experience with our, oh, yeah. with our Rangers. Oh, um, yeah. Maxine, you should go first. Sure. Yeah. So I'm playing a Tailspinner Explorer. Uh, I've been really enjoying the new Tailspinner cards. I'm also playing a solo playthrough in which I'm a Tailspinner shaper. It's actually the same deck that we played on the Playcast um, the other day. And um, yeah, basically my, my deck is built around supporting via Soothing Fatigue and Scouting. So I'm playing the... Um, uh, what's the name of the role? Uh, Vigilant Lookout? Yes, oh, uh... the, the Scout one. Um, and I've got like the phonoscopic headset so I can scout double cards and uh, a lot of the new Tailspinner cards deal with Soothing Fatigue, or uh, a few cards even that can take some cards back from your Fatigue stack into your deck. Uh, so I don't, like, accomplish much. Like, <laughs> I, like I, can, I can connect with things pretty well, but I can't really traverse at all. Um, so I kind of rely on Fisher and Andrew to do that. <laughs> She she says she doesn't accomplish much, but if it weren't for her scouting, we would have sure, had the scouting a much is huge. worse time. <laughs> the scouting is huge, and the loot. Oh, that loot is awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah the that, loot that is very loot good. Is yeah. clutch. Yeah, I've been playing as a uh, as a <clears throat> excuse me as a artificer. Uh, what am I? A artisan. <laughs> artisan. Yes. Artisan artificer. artisan artificer. Yep, the classic yeah. combo. Classic, uh, yeah. I was like, am I doing it? No, I'm doing the most <laughs> standard thing. That's what I'm doing. I think you're using a bunch of uh, Devi's new cards, though. So it's, it's am, definitely yeah. a, a shake-up from the, the usual core set artisan artificer. Yeah, Arfisser. it's it's very different from what I normally play. I'm play I am also playing with the Gregarious invent Inventor, so I can just search for uh, gear whenever I want. So I've... Uh, I've done a lot of a fair amount of shopping. I, I need to do more <laughs> shopping so that I can I can get more one ofs in my deck. Uh, but I'm feeling like uh, at least for my play style, it feels maybe a little too consistent. Um, where I, I I like dealing with random chance a little bit more. So just being able to grab anything I want is uh, it feels um, I don't know maybe not quite as satisfying, but it is really helpful, <laughs> especially <laughs> since I can share that ability. We've made a lot of use yeah of that. Yep. Uh, but i've been thinking about changing my build if i can do some more shopping to a uh to the recycler build 
where mm-hmm. I have the recycler in play. After I use gear, I'll put it on that and then reuse it for its icons. I think that's probably a better uh, mm-hmm. a better deck concept for this role than the standard put the belt pouch into play and um, just have as much gear as possible at all times. Uh, I feel like I'd get a lot more use out of that gear if I was if I was putting it through the recycler. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I might I might want to make that happen. I, I I used a recycler build for a few of our tests earlier on in the process, and I I really enjoyed it. It's a very different play style than the usual kind of get your engine going, keep it fueled kind of artificer. Uh, but I think it's it was a build we'd always wanted to make happen. But I think in these with the stewards cards it, it's finally actually viable i don't know yeah. if it's quite as easy to play but it is viable yeah i think i just want a little yeah i'm ready for a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a challenge in my deck so i i uh <laughs> i think i'm gonna gonna try to make that happen uh, uh, it's been fun yeah uh, uh, Sean, yeah, so, uh, oh, uh yeah so so my deck is i'm playing a shepherd spirit speaker so basically the the premise of my deck <laughs> was to get every single card <laughs> that could go within reach possible. Oh, man. <laughs> I wanted to make my within reach just ludicrously full. Uh, <laughs> and so that so far, uh, mission accomplished there. Yeah. Uh, my within reach is always just <laughs> wild. Uh, but actually, the spirit speaker has been working very well. It's, yeah, it is. It's definitely the kind of more advanced user. I would not have wanted to play Legacy with a Spirit Speaker as my first game of Rangers ever, um, because there's a lot going on at once. But actually, it's on the turns where everything comes together, it's incredibly satisfying. Like, Mm. all of my challenge effects will... I'll I'll get my spirits all charged up, all my challenge effects will cascade down, and I can be like, all right, this spirit does this thing, and then... I'm going to use my drum to cause this uh, challenge effect to resolve, which does this other thing. And like, it'll be this cascade that'll clear multiple cards at once. And I just feel like the most productive, like, <laughs> ranger ever. Uh, it's very cool. It's really cool. Yeah. I love yeah. The, but, the wombo combo that you have. Yeah. The wombo combo is just solid. I mean, like, <laughs> wombo so combo. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like, just a really good combo. It's like I just do a giant commune test and then get a bunch of other things from it like i can cascading effects Mm -hmm. i can do one big commune with a spirit and get half that much on another spirit and then half that much on the location as well and it's kind of like oh man when you use walk with me or follow in footsteps in the core set but honestly like even a step more Uh, it's Mm -hmm. uh so i've been really enjoying the deck there's a lot going on with it but uh i think it definitely accentuates the puzzle Mm-hmm. of rangers i think the way devi has designed the spirits to like move around and like the positioning mechanics in them uh really makes every round feel even more like a puzzle so i've been enjoying it yeah that's cool and you're playing as the disciple the guide the exhaust to do a spirit speaker test yes that is the one thing i maybe regret uh is i find myself very often in my build wanting to do two spirit speaker tests around at least well maybe we should go and talk to somebody and see if yeah, there's, there's something we could do about that there's oh. some things we could do about what? that interesting <laughs> okay. okay 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 <laughs> what? Uh, did you have a question from the chat Corey? um yeah i did see one from i realize i'm going between the chat and listening to you guys everyone <laughs> talked about their deck right <laughs> all we did of yeah, okay. yeah all did. i was yeah. like am i forgetting because uh, I, uh, anyways, Sean Tilson asked, uh, once you're done describing the decks, what cards from stewards are you enjoying the most? I, well, you're doing like almost all your cards are stewards cards, practically Fisher. I'm going to name one of Maxine's cards. Oh yeah. Which wait, wait, what's the name of the card? It's the, the one the where Dole you record, with oh. no, where oh, you yeah. record the the ranger chronicle or the uh the yes. reward one okay i i think the ranger chronicle has been more enjoyable because like she well i guess you, you explain what your card does <laughs> yeah yeah so basically when someone does something uh really notable so something you succeed with four or more effort or if you take two or more fatigue at the same time then you uh you put uh, a record on this book and then you can use it to recount the tale of the time that that thing mm. happened and it uh 
it gets a card back from their fatigue stack and it also adds progress to every human within reach because it's like you're telling the story and everyone's like enthralled and listening and uh and yeah what what fisher was alluding to is uh every time that happens i i actually make a note of what it was and or at least i try to when you do a pretty not, good job <laughs> when there's not like 18 uh things happening at the same time <laughs> uh, that's awesome and then and then i'll recount the, hey remember that time that you did this thing and it's it's a lot of fun yeah yeah, yeah I, I think fun. so i i think my my favorite moments have come out of that where like you're <laughs> recounting something that happened earlier in the session and yeah. we laugh about it again like <laughs> so I, i've been enjoying that one quite a lot yeah that's great really good yeah is that one of those uh the ones where you like can unlock a reward over time no but there's another tail spinner card that has a similar kind of theme mm. uh that uh that is uh one of those mission cards yeah. okay yeah yeah those are super cool too those yeah. are really that, cool that whole yeah. function that was my i was gonna say that's the one i i had the most fun with was the um was the artisan background mm, objective yes. um mm, mm -hmm. the friendly repair service yeah yeah I, yeah that's, that's, on that that's one. So cool. cool like especially playing it so we we started this campaign uh, we're playtesting it as though we're starting with new rangers in the uh, with with Legacy of the Ancestors. So we did the story so so far uh, kind of catch up bit. Uh, so we we have some uh, rewards, but we maybe aren't as like super powered up as we were when we uh, if if we were to have played the uh, the full campaign or simulated one. Um, but I so like starting with a new ranger in Legacy with the friendly repair service, I think will be a relatively rare thing because I think most people will probably do it in the core game. Um, but that <laughs> that uh, <laughs> is an attachment that requires a human to be in play. Mm -hmm. So since we're like underground, there are just far fewer humans around. So <laughs> whenever anyone would show up, I'd be like, oh, thank goodness. So like, can I interest you and maybe help like uh, just a repair a or some guy? in a deserted town. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> just desperate. Let me fix your stuff. Yeah, exactly. So that was really fun. So whenever I'd have that in my hand and a human would show up, I always got I got very, very excited. You finished uh, it, right? I did. Yep. I got yes. the reward. I don't want to spoil Sorry. what it is, but it's a very, very good card um, that uh, I used today for the first time, and it was awesome when it when it happened. Yeah. That is but awesome. I also really have been enjoying the loot, uh, your loot, Maxine. <laughs> that uh, loot's really good. Yeah, your loot co combined with my, uh, with my functional replica. Yeah. Where oh. I can, like, synthesize the loot and then also soothe fatigue for people has been pretty awesome yeah that's super so, awesome. so, so maxine we've now we've now chosen two of your cards <laughs> two of my <laughs> cards yeah so yeah. what are your favorites now that we've stolen two of your cards Stole well, your, yeah. well actually i was i was gonna mention uh the long walk uh one of mm. your cards because that that card has been so clutch for us because you you really rely on like two different spirits so mm -hmm. being able to like commune with one and still get some progress on another one has been like super clutch and uh I've also I was able to trade for the empathy amplifier, which is mm. a I believe it's a conciliator card, and um, that has been really good for me because, like I said earlier, like I'm not doing any traversal or like occasionally I'll have a bunch of icons in my hand I'll do a big traversal, but for the most part I've just been doing a lot of connecting, so that card's been really useful, and it's just a cool like concept. <laughs> I just love the idea that I'm setting up this little device and now I'm like. All right, I can understand everyone a little bit better, like yeah, yeah. and vice that's, versa. Uh, that's fun. I also, without spoiling anything, uh, and this isn't a card from Stewards, but there's a reward card in, in Legacy of the Ancestors that, as soon as the potential to get that uh, card popped up, I was like, "We're dropping everything. We're dropping everything to go get this." <laughs> That was, yeah, since Maxine hasn't played before, she's our lead <laughs> ranger and we're letting her make all our decisions. And like, she was hey, us. just <laughs> like, we're beelining the plot. We're beelining the plot until this card comes up. And she's like, never mind, screw the plot. D drop everything. <laughs> <laughs> this is happening now. Deal with it. <laughs> that was fun. That is, that's great. I, I, I've been, I, I enjoy the little bit I did play with Stewart's cards on the playcast, uh, especially like the ocarina and like all that. Mm. There's so many fun tools in the tail spinner kit and spirit speaker kit. And I, 
am excited to see all the uh i've seen them but it's like excited to like really when you're like actually building a deck you start really reading it and thinking about it and it, yeah that's when you get really excited yeah evan you should come back with like to the playcast with renzo's uh renzo's cousin and then you could make a deck <laughs> zenzo with the, <laughs> zenzo, I was, zenzo. I, definitely he, yeah i i have to figure out some thematic way for him or his brother or cousin to come back with a full new like deck of cards because <laughs> mm-hmm. my stuff wasn't working you should call them uh uh, what would it be? Osren. Yeah. Or yeah Oz, Oz, Ozner. Yeah. Osner. Osner. Yeah. His Osner. evil twin brother who has all the <laughs> yeah. weapons yeah, in the yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> Goatee. <laughs> Maybe Renzo's the evil one. <laughs> um, oh, so we do have three questions that have popped up in the chat, but they're oh, not yeah. necessarily on this topic. Do you want to jump into them or do you want to hold on no, questions to listeners? Well, but... if you feel like this, we should just jump in, then we can. Because like, we have a discussion topic topic yeah. in, hand, uh, uh, in mind to kind of keep things going but we mm-hmm. can also just take questions yeah yeah for sure well then i'll go back through so the first one we got was from stitch and play solo i know that uh, guy <laughs> yeah he says i have a question that occurred to me earlier today i built a deck but didn't realize that not every personality card is available for every aspect Thematically, I find them similar to Arkham Horror's colorless cards, but why can't they use them in all? Why can't I use them all all the time? Thematic or balance reasons? Um, it's I would say mostly mechanical reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I there well we want any aspect and approach icon combination to be valid. All sixteen combinations show up in the game uh, at this point in different places. Uh, there's definitely, because of the common tests, there's certain associations of certain approach icons with certain aspects just because those common tests are always available. And the because of that association and the fact that just having a card with two of the same icon is a bit more powerful, we gated those to certain decks for that reason, um, certain aspect combos for that reason. Um, so uh, it's a slight power level thing, but honestly, gating it from just people with one aspect isn't that big of a deal. We just wanted people when they dumped a stat to really feel it basically. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) they do, they feel it more, they, they could more easily compensate for it if this restriction wasn't in place. Yeah. I, while it, uh, is I think it could be frustrating maybe to some people. I like that realization when you're like, ooh, that looks cool. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. And then well, it it's... makes you think, well, maybe I should do, maybe make a different ranger next time so I could take that card, be it in a personality card or whatever card that might have a gate on it. Well, and you're always, you always eye, like everybody always eyes that because they're like, oh, that shores up my dump stat, right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> we don't want you to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It's like it's responding to Anders who popped up. He said, "Hey, uh, Anders, I heard that hey, guy. Anders. I know him too. Yeah, <laughs> I hope the kid feels better. He couldn't be here. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. How do I close this? Okay, there we go. I have the emoji <laughs> thing open. Um, yeah. No, and I, I think that's. Uh, well, I'm, I'm personally a big fan of card games that have, uh, like factions or like very, very like they play into the factions or the color system really well mm-hmm. instead of having colorless. And I think. It's fun that you have to have a hard time picking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like you want to have everything. It, in the end of the day, too. Like, like I've said it before. Uh, say it again. No one will stop you if you decide to just ignore all those and make whatever, whatever deck you want. If you, you, mm-hmm. you can totally do that. Put all the threes and the twos in your deck and. <laughs> see what happens <laughs> yeah we don't have like a duolingo owl that like hides outside your house and watches you right as you build decks <laughs> the, the ranger police aren't gonna bust yeah. down your door and like yeah. <laughs> not yet anyway slap the yeah, cards yeah. out of your hand yeah. is that the same thing like <laughs> two and a half million might pay for that owl <laughs> it's like in skyrim when you can like break the enchanting system and have some like a million power like dagger or something oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love that stuff <laughs> There's no ceiling. <laughs> um, I got another one from Anne. I, I'm, I'm so sorry if I butchered this, but I'm just going to say your first name. Anne Sophie or Anne Sophie. I want to say Anne Sophie is probably 
more correct. Um, she asks, would you consider implementing a short demo or a one day campaign of the base game or like legacy of the ancestors expansion on board game arena? Just asking for a friend. <laughs> we, uh, we, we mentioned in past podcasts that we're exploring digital implementations. We do have a demo up on tabletop simulator right now that you can go check out. You can find a link on our website. I believe it's in the resources section. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can check out a demo there if you, if you're interested. Um, I will say that Board Game Arena is a decent chunk down our list at the moment because they do fully implemented gameplay. Um, what that means, or like, I forget what they call it, what their framing is, but mm. basically they, when they implement a game on Board Game Arena, they want everything to be functional. So like every card to fully enact its rules in the game system, as opposed to being more of like a simulation of the tabletop, like something like tabletop simulator or tabletopia <laughs> is and so because of that i think rangers is more of an intimidating prospect just yeah. because we're a large game with a lot of different effects that interrelate in lots of interesting ways it certainly could be coded but it would be a daunting task uh and i don't know if it'd be one that'd be worth the percentage that board game arena would take for making it in the first place and so i so think for do it, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, just a question. Uh, so the way it works is that we'd have to do the, the development ourselves. Um, I from the research I've done through Board Game Arena, um, they usually there's actually like two ways they do it. They can e you can either have somebody internal. I think they contract out, but basically they fully implement the game. Or there's like a community implementation mm. where like I think people can contribute and kind of crowdsource out the implementation of this stuff. Um, but then you kind of do like a, there's a split, there's a revenue share type situation based on which of these options you do. Hmm. Um, but I wouldn't say it's off the table, but I certainly think that it's a less likely implementation than something more kind of like, that's just allowing you to have access to the cards in a shared envi digital environment. Yeah, I guess I'd say if there's someone out there who wants to do it, let us know. Uh, <laughs> Sean, Sean is like, Chub Frog might need to get coding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just have Chub do all of it. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, boy. It's already yeah. taken on, it takes on so many rules questions from the community. Yeah, that sounds so hard. <laughs> like, I remember we, like, uh, uh, this had been buried in the recesses of my mind until recently. Because I, I don't know, I just kind of, like, maybe blocked that from my memory. But when I was working as the uh, digital creative director at uh, FFG, um, one of my projects was a digital implementation of Netrunner. And I remember <laughs> we, <laughs> we, con we contracted a, like a Twin Cities company. I forget the name. I forget their name. But we had like a really small budget to try to like get like a proof of concept going. And uh, we couldn't even get the proof of concept running of like something that had actual like implemented game rules for Netrunner because it had so much happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we burned through that budget immediately and then the project was canceled. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's oh. really, really, really hard uh, to make a game like this or any, any card game that has individual cards with unique effects into like a fully coded mm -hmm. thing. Timing and all this like things that yeah I mean, I mean just look at like you know magic the gathering like they had mm -hmm. the original version of magic the gathering the digital version which was i don't know pretty tough to play mm -hmm. i felt uh and then i isn't it re arena somewhat simplified no arena is fully, fully implemented, implemented. arena yeah. arena is what i always wanted magic online to be honestly like can't understate what a undertaking and accomplishment yeah. arena mm -hmm. is to, to so, do what it does yeah, yeah. And just imagine like with the, the money they have behind it to make that happen is i think really really what's required mm -hmm. frankly oh yeah 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 i've i i'm a, one of those sickos that's like that likes Yu-Gi-Oh, and <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh's always had video <laughs> games and they've done really really good with it but uh this um the game has become so complicated and the new one master duel which is wild like it literally like pulls up the text and it highlights the text that's triggering but it's just oh, so cool. much stuff is going that's off cool. all the time. And because there's so many triggers on your turn or your opponent's turn, mm -hmm. 
you're just like right clicking to say no to like 10 things every turn you know like it's just and you're the like, game no, is not that one yeah it's it's wild and if you like click too many times it like commits you and you have to like destroy your own card because <laughs> it's just destroy a card and there's only one you know or something uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. and then you just leave because you feel terrible <laughs> and embarrassed um yeah it's crazy the amount of work that goes into those things uh, but yeah, so so Anne Sophie, I think the are- for all of this, the arena one is probably going to be a lot less likely. I think that we do want to explore digital implementations. We are exploring digital implementations, but they're probably not going to be arena. Sorry. Yeah. Are there any more live questions, Corey? A couple, couple more. Okay. Uh, and, but and then we can move to our discussion topic uh there's one from frank levy or frank levy i Uh, I don't know uh, levi he says this has probably been answered somewhere else on the internet but will all of the roles be getting a deluxe ranger token meeple someday i'm really excited about those potentially (laughs) (laughs) still waiting on those uh, yeah i got it so we have to get a quote on them um i I think they're probably gonna be pretty inexpensive uh we'll see um so we'll we'll or rather, not inexpensive, but you know, affordable. Um, so I think I'm I'm definitely open to doing more. It feels like something that we would want to like remain relegated to our uh, crowdfunding campaigns because um, it's going to be pretty niche as we go along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Though, this is a question of like, what do we do later on? Those meeples got yeah. some interest, though. They, those oh, were, yeah, they did. They, no, did. they like sold those. really well on the game found. So, yeah, they're definitely popular enough. It's more a question to me of, like, how to package them going forward if we were going to do the rest. You know, because this first expansion, the Sewers of the Valley, has a lot mm-hmm. of extras. But then as we go, it's going to be less and less. So mm-hmm. yeah, so you gotta like wait until you have a certain amount yeah, of them, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, add a bunch of skews, and I don't know. Maybe we'll do yeah. just like one big one and then do a preview of all. We'll just have all the roles ready. Yeah. Uh, well, and Get we'll give you like, Evan. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they go pretty fast. Uh, the like mm-hmm. the little version of them obviously is referencing the full one, but right. What do you think, it, Evan? We'll just do all the roles it, up front. It is. I mean, it is hard to distill down the distinguishing features of each ranger in in a simplified way. So it go. It does go quickly, but it's like. I get analysis paralysis on how to like isolate different parts and reduce them down. It's fun though. Yeah, I don't think you're paralyzed for very long though. It's more no, like I guess not. analysis blinking. Uh, it feels <laughs> feels very fast uh, from my perspective anyway. Uh, maybe you have too high standards on your own productivity. Um, but yeah, I could see it. Like to me, that probably would make the most sense. Is like some big Uber pack that just has all of them at one point uh but we'll see i i think mm-hmm. the popularity of them from the from this campaign has been great so uh i think that bodes well for us doing the rest of them and they just need to get the the pricing on them uh to know for sure what we'll be able to do down the road mm-hmm uh all right uh there's one more question but i thought i'd mention we're at 55 concurrent viewers let's go dang yeah, we usually get like 10 you know on the replay <laughs> one so this yeah, is good yeah. this is good yeah thank uh, you for joining us yeah thank you all um okay as azure sparrow says one thing i've noticed from the base game it's fairly hard to swap your deck composition from gear to moments and vi- uh, vice versa if you do your initial if you if you do your initial ratios wrong is this addressed at all in legacy that's an interesting question. Hmm. It's not particularly. Um, there's not <laughs> a lot of options to... A lot of the trading... Legacy gives you some new options for trading, but not a lot of them switch card type. Uh, so that balance will have to still come from kind of rewards yeah. swapping in to customize. Yeah, that's what I, like I usually just find is like I get a really good moment that I'll just swap out for a gear. Mm. Yeah, the one and also like I usually find I've definitely built some decks that swung too far in one direction or the other, but I think that the pitching cards for approach icons mechanic is forgiving enough that you can usually kind of smooth out some of those imbalances. The one brutal one is if you just have no gear and 
like are just kind of missing out on sustainable resources. Yeah. But honestly, a lot of the reward gear is better. So if you're if you're feeling a little pinched, I might recommend just doing some side activities, finding some some new rewards, and seeing how you feel after a few more days. Yeah. Yeah, and we do have some uh, future designs that I think will be more or future <laughs> archetypes that be more suited to moments moments even moments only uh, mm. down the road so that'll be fun i want a moment only deck that you sounds could, yeah that you can make that fun. happen right now if you want you can yeah, do it. Yeah. yeah uh oh, so i think chat. that's i was gonna say wayne o'connor popped up oh he hey, wayne. Says, hey wayne hey wayne he might be number 55 <laughs> he's like <"That's> number 55 <laughs> nice. slow wayne um all right so let's move on to our discussion topic that yeah. we have outlined for this. Um, so as a follow-up to the discussion from, from the latest Covenant Monday live stream, do great games, great in quotes, do great games always find success? What do y'all think? So I feel like I, I want to give a little more context to this. Um, uh, so yeah, Covenant the Covenant guys had a, uh, uh, during their, their Monday live stream this week, mostly talking about CCGs, um, but effectively making the argument that, you know, you need, you need more than just a great game uh, to uh, be successful. And I think, I think that is, that is true. But then as the conversation went on, I, I, I started to feel like, and I had lots of <laughs> like tech side conversations with, uh, with Zach about this after, after the fact. So he, he and I had talked a little bit more. Uh, about some of the some of their hot takes during the uh during the discussion um but i got the impression listening that uh the implication was being made uh and this is just my interpretation i don't know if this is actually what they were saying but i got the impression that the implication was being made that there have been great games in the past that have not succeeded because of a lack of business acumen applied to them and I was trying to go into my memory banks, my it's extensive memory banks, <laughs> and try to, to think of an example of a game that fell into this category that did not succeed because it didn't have the business to back it up. And I couldn't think of one. Um, I think there's definitely been games that could have been more successful than they were uh, because of you know some misstep or just missed opportunity or... Maybe the the um, uh, the market didn't exist quite at the right moment for that game when it was out. Um, but in my mind, I felt like I, don't, I can't remember ever playing a game that wasn't like huge, uh, and then saying to myself, "This game should have been huge." Like, what's what's the problem? Um, so I so yeah, I, f I felt like games that are you know quote unquote great. I think it's important to put it in great. Uh, in quotes, um, because obviously that means different things to different people. Um, but games that you could look at and say, that game is great, and then it wasn't successful. I couldn't think of any. So I'm I'm curious to know how you guys think of it, because I tend to think that the great games are successful um, in one way mm -hmm. or another. Some of them maybe like fall a little bit flatter than others, but I think even in CCGs, from my you know, albeit limited understanding or comprehension of the sheer volume of CCGs out there, that all the best ones do get their moment in the sun, at least. But yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm curious to know how how you guys, what you guys think. It's all very uh, premised on like what you consider success to be. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. like that's that's worth noting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess success is you made a thing and people played it and enjoyed it i don't know like again yeah, like, is like, that like, enough if if a game comes out and it it lasts two years and then it gets uh it, you know it peters out um just like organically over time but it was really successful during those two years was it a failure no i don't think so yeah you know what i mean like yeah well yeah so i mean i do think that to kind of um counterpoint your i can't think of any great games that weren't successful right there's yeah. definitely survivorship bias there right like mm -hmm. there could be games that are there sitting on be. a shelf somewhere that you have just never heard of because they were never got successful right mm -hmm. and like i mean that's always one thing we always talk about uh is like especially when people are new 
to working on games, there's always this idea that like somebody's going to steal my game or steal my idea. And now granted, there are some examples of that, but like broadly, the limited resource in the games industry isn't great ideas. Right. It's great ideas that get fully made into a game and then <laughs> that then sold and distributed, right? And so those are the filters. So there's all sorts of great ideas. And so I'm sure there's great games sitting there that we've never played. But like to a point somebody made, I like there's another question about what makes a game great. Especially like Covenant's conversation on Monday is very focused on uh lifestyle games. So like card games especially, but like lifestyle games being these games that like you engage with and take up a lot of your time and a lot of other people's times that are about engaging with a larger community. And I might argue that like a lot of different card games could be great with the right community, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they need that. It's not just the game. It's also the community and the organized play that make a game, a game like that, a lifestyle game. Great. Right. Like a lot of people have a lot of fond memories of Netrunner, And like, I would say it was a great game. Right. But like, if I just play, if nobody ever caught on to Netrunner and it never had that community and all of that stuff around it, would it be great? I don't know. I think right? so. Because I think, like, <laughs> I, I think on its own terms, I think it's like it's just a great game to, to play, regardless. Like, if anyone, if no one else had played it, I think the the community definitely does make it uh, uh, help it succeed more and help you feel mm -hmm. like you're part of a bigger thing, but. Um, I, like my experience obviously is like being at the company that made it and playing it is, is way different. Like there's only, you know, there's a, only a handful yeah. of people who have that experience and that, so that was pretty cool. And I think that that's part of, I think maybe what, uh, when I think about Netrunner, that definitely plays into it where, you know, the shared experience of everyone in the office playing it and doing our tournaments mm -hmm. and, and then it being like in that game definitely successful so <laughs> wildly mm -hmm. successful that was incredibly successful even if it ended kind of unceremoniously um that was a monster success for mm -hmm. for ffg um but well, like see so yeah, net netrunner might not be a great example yeah I, I love that game system but um controversial one warhammer okay i love oh, warhammer yeah. is it great i love I, yeah. I think it is a great game because of the experience I've had with it. Yeah. I don't think it's a great game design. I don't even think it's a good game design. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think you need to have a great game to be successful. Uh, that's sure. that's for sure. My question is more are all great games successful? Not but like, there's plenty of games great, that aren't great well? or even good that are super successful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But my, my I, I think... point is what does great mean here, right? Because yeah. I right. think Warhammer is a great game, but I actually don't think the game design is any good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, like, I guess yeah. I was thinking mostly of the design. It was mostly what okay. is like objectively mm. is the design, like the experience of playing the game. Well, I think that's the thing. The experience of playing the game is probably the 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 best way of saying something is great because mm -hmm. the experience to your Warhammer point uh is a huge part, I think, of what what plays into a game's greatness and you can't really just take it on the mechanics on, on its own but yeah i think a lot of that experience a lot of what makes warhammer a great game for me comes from the community yeah right and so if, it, if that if my all my friends weren't also painting models we weren't talking about these models we weren't telling these stories as we sat down to play the game i would not i would barely even like that game right <laughs> um and so like it's kind of interesting because i and i don't think it really comes from the design necessarily so like there's kind of mm -hmm. there's certain ephemeral things that aren't you can't just relate mm -hmm. to this like objective analysis of a game's design, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. No, I think about this a lot because even like with anything, right? Movies, video games, board games, it's like what's great is such a personal thing. You know, I think it has so much to do with, like you said, Netrunner is a great game. And some people might not have ever heard of it, right? But then some people might think it sucks, I guess. Some, yeah, some people might really not like that yeah. kind of game. They, you know, they might not like the asymmetry or the bluffing. Um, I but just then, like, the idea that you want to add them about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think a lot of it comes down to, like, you know, the experiences that you have surrounding that thing. Um, and I think, you know, of course, there's just obviously more people who have experiences with that thing, the more reputation that it has. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, it is such an interesting question because great is really a personal thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, and I feel like too, like what you were saying, Fisher, like you, you almost just have to presume there's some amazing game out there. Like, uh, just that has never been played. Uh, mm -hmm. no one knows what the hell it is. And maybe it's the, like the best game <laughs> ever made. It's entirely possible that that thing could exist and we just don't know it. So it's a, it's a really difficult question to answer. I feel like the, it becomes, starts to become a little bit more answerable, but obviously there's not enough hours in your, mm -hmm. in one's life to play every game, but where if a game is published and it's great, will it find success? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that one is maybe a little bit more answerable. Um, I don't know. I have, like, uh, I did think of a game. A game did come to my mind, Maxine, for you, because I know there was a game that you really enjoyed uh, that I don't know if if you felt it was great. I remember at the time you were like, this game is awesome. Um, but then it didn't really take off. It was uh, Grim Slingers. Grim Slingers is a perfect example of a great game that didn't see like wide wide stream like mainstream success um it's entirely made as far as i know i could be wrong about some of this but it's like a one man show it's one person yeah, yeah. It does all of the graphic design all of the art all of the game That's design wild. which is incredible and it's just a really cool game and but yeah like there's i think there's plenty of fantastic indie games that will never see the kind of success that like team covenant is talking about um that we're talking about just because they just don't have that that install base they don't have that support they don't have like you know the same level of uh mm -hmm. like distribution like marketing well, I, yeah i'm curious i'm curious like if you know anything about the, the, how that game played out because like uh it did that game was in distribution um because i saw right, it yeah. i saw it in stores yeah. so it, it definitely got out there but i wonder if like you know going back to what uh zach on the covenant stream was talking about the the needing a business acumen um where a, a one person production art design graphic design everything <laughs> uh maybe not the most sustainable i mean right. the, there's yeah. the above yeah. and below uh sleeping gods creator that guy's i don't know he's he's a robot or something or <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't know how he does that. Um, if, if, if I could draw, I would be a triple threat. <laughs> yeah, but to, to put forth the effort to do all that work and then be so insanely prolific uh, yeah, is yeah. really something else. Um, so I wonder if that you know if that creator just ran out of steam. I don't know. Do you know? I I don't know. I know that there was a second edition of the game that was printed. Actually probably more uh editions than that because there were multiple printings of each and an expansion okay so that sounds uh, like it did pretty so, well yeah, actually. It, I, so like yeah this uh this kind of goes back to what i was saying before like how do you measure success maybe for this person it was a huge success like maybe for him it was a smash hit yeah uh it, it kind of <laughs> just depends on uh yeah yeah i, I think yeah. andrew wilson in the comments makes an interesting point too about like there are good games like well-designed games that are just ugly <laughs> right <laughs> that don't yeah. have the like art or production to kind of like get mainstream appeal uh um, terraforming mars uh oh, raises oh God, an objection yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. food chain magnet yeah made, or made, twilight right? like, struggle <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I think Twilight Struggle works in the context, but I do agree on terraforming Mars with the uh, all of the stock art and stuff. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think right at the beginning of this discussion, uh, but Ben Clapperton said, "I don't think a game that isn't successful can be great, but it can be good or even the best game wise. But it, greatness implies reputation." Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's a good That's point. That's it a is good a point, good ben. thought. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, you're right. It, it, to to call it because it is pretty subjective, as we were saying, like what does great mean? But I think yeah, great greatness usually does come from some kind of some some kind of consensus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even if it's like you know, again, it's going to always be somewhat relative. Like I'm mm -hmm. someone who thinks that Dead Man's Chest is the greatest parts of the Caribbean movie, <laughs> but other people don't agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm a film, it, I'm a movie guy. It aged well. 
it's it good. aged well. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so well, cool. Robinsky always has two climaxes to every movie, you know. <laughs> you just gotta I, like the one that's the best. Anyway. It, uh, you're all all right that like all of these words, you know, like as we've discussed, all these different words as part of this are fairly subjective. I would does greatness imply some kind of lasting impact on the industry as well? Like popular and hitting a threshold enough that like it has its ripples are felt past itself. I think that would definitely add to the greatness, but that's a like that's a pretty elite group of titles right there mm. that, that mm-hmm. i would say actually has that that kind of impact um, yeah there, then you're getting to like the greatest of all time category which is its own mm. little mm-hmm. cream on the yeah, top I mean, of this, of I, this I think group. Su- covenant's initial su- uh, discussion was more just about successful right like mm-hmm. can a game be successful without business support right like without yeah. a good business plan or like a marketing funnel. Right? Yeah, like CCGs, kinda... CCGs in particular, like the the need for them to find their uh, to find their specific audience, um, yeah. to like have a have a plan for going into the marketplace. C- so there's well, a man. CCG... There's a man banging pots who <laughs> wants something. Uh, <laughs> Over Sixth here, member of the podcast. He is. <laughs> I'm not sure there. what he's selling. Uh, uh, I don't know what he's doing, but he's getting this dog who lives next door all worked up. Uh, mm-hmm. This. <laughs> nope, he's gone. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that guy wants. He's got. It's like these, these weird, like pans on on metal rods. I don't know. I have no idea what those. I've never seen those before. Sean Sean wants us to invite him on. He can sell, his, <laughs> sell his wares to our he's, 50, he's, 50 watchers, he's 50 already, viewers. He's already walked down the street. He's, <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> Let's see. We do have some uh, some comments, but I did want to mention. I think I think maybe I, I, it's hard to make a hard stance on this topic, but I'm gonna maybe say that like for me, as I've been thinking about it, uh, I think. Maybe great games do always find success. It just depends on what that success means. I think I think a lot about a, a, there's actually people who've messaged, uh, who've commented with some games, which we can mention some of them. But I think of, about a lot of games I liked. Like one of the ones mentioned here is Legends of Runeterra, which uh, I think is great. Um, there was that Warhammer Champions card game, which I don't think was the best IP for that, but I thought the game was really interesting and they tried really hard to make a cool digital version and they kind of beat, uh, altered to the punch with the scan your cards thing. And, um, although they didn't have a QR code in the corner, (laughs) um, but it's like, you know, a lot of them kind of put petered out for various reasons or legends of Runeterra is still around, but it's, uh, struggling, but I think. I think maybe in some way, even these small, smaller ones, I wonder if it's they're still a success because the people who make these things that don't make it super far often do go and make another thing. And that thing is either a new thing or an extension of that idea. It's like a lot of my favorite filmmakers, they'll kind of make the same film with the same thesis like five times. <laughs> and then the best one is like the second to last one. Cause the last one they were trying too hard, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like all of those are kind of great because they kind of kept a path going. And I wonder if that's somewhat true in this instance, like a lot of these smaller games, a lot of these people probably are still in the industry or making things or went on to make video games or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if that is enough success to say that, yes, those things were great and they did something right. They left some kind of mark, even if it's just on the creator themselves. Yeah, I think that's a, I, that's a, I think that's a good punctuation on it. <laughs> <For a second. laughs> Did you have any thoughts on this, Evan? You've been you've been quiet. I'm not going to let you know. You're worried about you know, <laughs> so I don't. I just don't have the ex- wide exposure to a lot of games. And what I thought of immediately maybe doesn't fulfill the parameters, but. I always thought, and I think a lot of people would agree that Destiny was Star Wars. Destiny was a great game, but that I don't know if that qualifies as that um, game was definitely a success. 
it's not as, that's, <laughs> that's an example of a game that was not as successful as potentially it could have been because yeah. of some mm-hmm. uh yeah a variety of factors um but uh, i do remember like the first year i was head of studio when i did the uh uh like the all staff meeting to say like this was our year and this is what we have coming up and you know if you if you guys remember mm-hmm. those um <laughs> uh, I was, those are always the the presentations I was, I was always the most nervous to give um mm-hmm. but the uh destiny that year was like something like 19 percent of our total revenue wow. mm-hmm. uh, mm, that's crazy yeah, yeah. so it's a lot of money um mm-hmm. and it, it could have it could have done more i think if we had done a fair number of things differently but uh, i think when you look at it, it had maybe was it like seven total sets in the end I, before it ended like i'm not sure something like that so. yeah but that's you know seven sets for a collectible game is pretty good i think yeah, I yeah think that's that's a, a that's a perfect example of a game that like just because it ended doesn't mean it wasn't successful right you know? yeah 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 i think people just have a lot of like both inside the company <laughs> or if you're a customer or a fan of the game have some trauma around that <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah, that game. yeah 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 and a lot well, of yeah, yeah but like you don't need to be magic <laughs> You don't need to be Magic the Gathering to be successful, right? Like, yeah. you don't need yeah. to have been yeah. around for 30 years. Well, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. There's only... Are you going to dethrone th- Magic? There's only... <laughs> like, like... Yeah, if that's the bar for success, you know, there's only, in my opinion, there's only three games that meet that criteria, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah three, and three of, yeah. three of those card games, and everyone knows what they are. With that I, I do small, have one... Uh, uh, sorry, oh, go ahead. I got I to gotta cut in... Um... I gotta run. My uh, <gasps> daughter just woke oh, no. up. She's about to cry. So, okay. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. I hope yeah, Sydney feels better. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, she's feeling better already. But, anyways, see y'all. All right, see you, Evan. Bye. See you, Evan. Okay, that's that's first time. And then there were left. four. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it still seems like it's working, so that's good. Uh, oh, it's a bummer. Um, I was gonna say um, there was one FFG game that crossed my mind that. Uh, I really liked that didn't I think I mean I don't know if it, I, I wouldn't say it's hard to say if it found success but uh, Rune Rune Wars minis game. Mm. That's now of mm. course like the more I've thought about this and like my whole spiel I gave I think great there's always there's always like a lot of the things that I'm like oh that one didn't find success there's like something about it that doesn't make it great like Warhammer Champions it's because it was Warhammer <laughs> it could have been like anything else. <laughs> um and they're using like slush art um and then like rune wars had like a couple things like the terrain system those terrain and stuff. Yeah, I know, those terrain rules. <laughs> but the game is actually i love that game and i, I was I really stand, bummed i stand behind that design uh for those of you great. who don't know i designed mm-hmm. that I, I stand behind all of it except the terrain rules i love the rest of the game so yeah well that was kind of forced on you uh Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, try, I, I, I fought. I fought for what you wanted as best I could, but I was no, overruled. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to get into the to it, but I will say that like I stand behind that game except for train rules. That is what I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> it is, I, it's good game. It is a good game. I told you about my Rune Wars army. For, mm-hmm. for those in the audience, Nothing it's just 120 skeletons. skeletons that I just pushed <laughs> slowly across the table. Oh, <laughs> man. They, have, they had, like, the lowest movement in the game, yeah. so they just kind of, like, trudge. I love... Yeah, there's so much cool so stuff great. in that game. I playtested that a lot when I first started. Uh, we should play that one on the Playcast one someday. Yeah. Because that's be a good fun. one. I Mine still are have painted, it. but I've got, I've got some minis. They're just not painted. Yeah, I still have, like, I, I did a elf, I bought an elf army that I wanted to paint in, like, these autumnal colors, and I had a pretty, mm. pretty cool like, concept in mind. I have them all assembled. None of them are painted, though. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't, I couldn't mm. get around to it. Uh, we'll see if I, if I ever paint them, but uh, if, we, if we were to do something on stream where it was like, we need to paint minis and then get ready to do something live... That could uh, potentially give me the motivation I need to get it done. Get that army painter dip and yeah, dip man, and just, just do a dunk system. <laughs> the dip and dunk. I think they paint uh, up pretty quick. Like I think yeah. we we did a good job with those with those miniatures of uh, having like pretty pretty good pretty good visible chunky detail that uh, wouldn't take too much effort to make look good. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, they were cool. This is I fun stuff that... to work on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I my the army I always wanted to do was the um, 
the white car, the skeletons, but I wanted to sculpt little green stuff coming out of their eyes and mouths and then oh, paint cool. it with that Vanta black. But of course, <laughs> you couldn't buy it back then. Oh, like, like, the, like the, the thing that like, sucks like so up the light. black. Uh, yeah. Anish like, Kapoor's. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of those things that like in my mind sounds cool, but then when you do it, it probably doesn't suck up as much light as you think. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. See, last... see, I... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, see, I can't paint minis at all. So I just took bone colored primer and just went. Mm. I mean, <laughs> that's it. Does, I was like, does, called does. it a day. Yeah. Done. That works. <laughs> uh, there was one mention of another game. Who was it? Was it Stitchin? Who says um, Mageling? Someone Mageling. said Mageling. Mageling. I've never heard of Mageling. Mageling. I've also never they, heard of Mageling. Yeah, somebody else plus one plus one Mageling as well. Yeah, I've never okay. heard of this one. Okay. Well, this might be a prime example of a great yeah. game that did not find yeah, an audience. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, there is also to it play cast well, Mageling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's huh. rated at 7.3, but sits at the rank 10,000 on uh, BGG. Huh. Nah, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> we just got we just got overtaken by uh star wars unlimited by the way on the customizable list no oh, oh, yeah <laughs> okay uh um yeah i don't know i don't know, I don't to, know to check out mageling we will check it out yeah totally um, it, it's got these like yeah it's got these like runic dice and, and stuff it's a cool it looks cool, cool. Hmm. Right up. now as we all google look. mageling yeah, yeah. Right? just watch watch us google a game Oh, the art's cool. Or wait, wait it depends on the cool. version, I guess, you're looking at. Oh, this one. Okay, I'm seeing a book called Mageling as well. Mm. All right. Yeah, that looks fun. Check out Mageling and then... Uh... We'll, ch we'll check it out. Yeah, cool. Um, yes, and then also to answer uh, Imad's question, we will not be at Gen Con, although... Fisher will I be there. Is... I will be. Um, I've been considering scheduling some kind of meetup. Um, I'll post in the uh, Discord about the fan Discord about it. I was considering just like setting a time and hanging out at a hotel or something and meeting anybody who wants to come by, maybe having the game out or whatever. So I'll post something in the fan Discord about when I'll be there, but I'm not like there in an official Earthborn capacity. There will not be a booth or anything. Yeah, um, I'm, but you I'm... can stop by and say hi. I'm also still considering going um, for like maybe like a day or two. Um probably leaning more toward it now uh so i'm i might be there too uh but yeah i'll that'll be a very last minute decision for me so mm -hmm. <laughs> wait until july and then i'll tell you if i'm going i would love uh, to go but i don't see it happening unless i get sent <laughs> right yeah same here my my uh my partner like they they asked if i wanted to demo arcs for leader games and i was like i ah, if i'm not going for earth i think i'm gonna stay home and try to be productive uh yeah i think uh i think we've talked about this before but you know we'll we will be at pax unplugged again in december uh that is for sure happening and you know if everything goes according to plan we'll have stuff for sale there and that'll be exciting um but i think uh when we were talking about our our convention plans i think we're probably you know can gonna keep keep that relatively slow paced as far as how many shows we do a year mm -hmm. so i think we probably want to add like another show next year um it's just gonna be a question of what show that is like is that gen con is that origins mm -hmm. you know what is it uh well i guess yeah. if, if we don't count like con of the north like we might do that too but, but yeah. that's more like a half a show <laughs> but these, yeah. these at our studio size these shows take shut down anything else we're doing for like a mm -hmm. week at least and then on top of that like folks are doing other prep work for plenty of time before that as yeah. well but like we just lose a week to the show right yeah and so like at the point you know like with weeks off and stuff you know you're looking at you lose two percent of your year to a show so you go to a few <laughs> shows and suddenly like you've lost a good percentage of like your whole studio's working time yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, i think yeah. i think there's a lot of re there's a lot of good reasons to do it um uh, oh totally but, that, but that's like, definitely we why we, we, we can't win go to everyone right? yeah 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 but that's definitely why you know at ffg eventually it you know the conventions became um uh, uh optional for a lot of people mm -hmm. and some people were just like nope you're not going uh <laughs> stay mm -hmm. stay in the office and work um, i started right then right when it was no one you mm -hmm. know but it used to be all hands on deck for many many oh, yeah. years uh for lots of things yeah and we shut down that stuff and I think it, a lot of times it doesn't, you know, like to your point, Fisher, there's 
there's a definite like uh productivity impact to having everyone at the company do a thing be that like man the christmas sale or uh to everyone go to gen con and um but i think there's also the benefit of the camar- camaraderie of doing those things that i think mm-hmm. oftentimes oh, no, offsets I, that i think it's totally worth it for like one or two for us to do one or two shows a year yeah. as earthborn right but like when we start talking like why aren't we at this show why aren't we at that show if yeah, we did yeah. every show like <laughs> it would we could easily use up 20 percent of our year just spent going to shows and that's yeah. no it's, that's it's like 20 percent of, of yeah. time that we're not making games right totally, mm-hmm. totally. yeah no, not we, to mention it's really hard to time signing up because some of them the signups are so early yeah mm-hmm. and it's like when you don't when you're not like in distribution where you just have like reprints f- filling the coffers with games and you're like timing everything on like a kickstarter fulfillment timing it's, it's yeah yeah it's really difficult to time them in a way that makes them beneficial yeah totally i i think uh based on where we are at the game found campaign uh the number of <laughs> the number of backers we have i think we will almost certainly be able to do a midstream reprint um so i think we will be in that spot <laughs> come next year where we could potentially do more but uh but yeah i i want to i want to keep keep the convention appearances low i would really love to do like a focused earthborn event um That'd be fun. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool. I keep like waiting for the new Covenant store to be built because uh, they're gonna, they're supposed to have like a big, you know, effectively like a like a a gathering spot for at least a couple hundred people. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that'd be really fun to do a you know like a a small scale come to this Earth, Earthborn thing, get some cool stuff, hang out, that would be play cool. some games. No, we- no, we got to do awesome. it at Rocky Mountain National Park. Yeah, no, we could do that. <laughs> I've thought about that. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, Estes Park That's would awesome. be cool. Uh, <laughs> like, I did pitch uh, to Stephen at one point to do a uh, Earthborn plus Covenant uh, gaming and wellness event where we oh. we combine gaming with uh, with uh, with with positive things for both body and mind. I think that could be pretty, That'd pretty be cool. Fun. That's awesome. Like a, like a mindfulness getaway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, or, you know, just like hiking or, you know, we have like, we offer like yoga classes in the morning or something, you know, nothing like oh, super man. intense where it's like mandatory that you need to do everything, but the options are available. I think that could be cool. The most, the that, most that chill cool. convention in gaming. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, from noon to one, we'll eat lunch and then we'll meditate. And, you know, I think, <laughs> I think it could be kind of cool to do something like that. I don't know that if that's ever nice. been done, uh, but I think that'd be fun. It'd be very appropriate for us. Dang. Um, yeah, let's get a couple questions just answered from the chat real quick, and then we can move on. Let's see. Um let me catch up to where I was. Sorry, this is hard. It's yeah. hard to do this. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, um, like originally our plan was, you know, honors would be hosting and then you would just be able to do this like quietly while and then just chime in. But now you have mm-hmm. to host and pay attention to the chat. Oh, yeah. I was like freaking out posting right before this. <laughs> We're going to be live <laughs> eating some I mean, cereal because I forgot to eat lunch. Since our discussion uh, topic, it's mostly just been uh, Sean asking about where we can where they can play rune wars and yeah. it's mostly secondhand or remaining copies sitting on uh flgs store uh, shelves yeah yeah you could probably find it at certain I, I think i've seen it even myself at like uh some uh it, local stores it, it floats um, around or, you know or you can come <laughs> hang out with me and play my copy <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's really it's, uh, it's really interesting how that game like <laughs> uh how that game ended like uh the fact that we ended up still printing a bunch of the like the last expansions um mm-hmm. and just have those like in really low quantities out there in the world someplace so i think like getting a full rune wars collection might be you might have to do a little bit of work but i don't know yeah i think you could do it i yeah um and the, sean and did just... ask what the terrain rules yeah <laughs> i should have we're been. not gonna get into the details yeah. here <laughs> when we yeah when we do a playcast, we'll change the rules. <laughs> we'll have a whole, we'll, I, I do. I do know how I, I would change them back to. Uh, so, but uh, you know, if we do a playcast, yeah. Sean also yeah. asked if we'd ever go to Essen as our uh, as another convention. 
Uh, I think that's one, you know, to Corey's point about like having, having product on hand, uh, where we definitely want to have that in order for us to go, um, our, uh, our partners are there and they're all selling the game in their language. So in some <laughs> ways we're there, uh, and I think we're there in the ways that matter because, you know, it's their market. Um, so I think we're we're kind of there by ex extension the, the the benefit i think for for me of going to essen um uh or for anyone uh from from earthborn going is is just for uh the networking um because there's a mm -hmm. lot a lot of everyone from the industry is there practically um except for us <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just maintaining those personal relationships and like hanging out with people and you know that that's that that'd be the value in going so i've been thinking mm -hmm. about going for that reason because i've not been there for many many years but yeah, yeah. we could send it's... a person like we could send you not yeah. like the whole studio yeah. running a booth mm -hmm. kind of yeah thing. but yeah. like because like getting a booth like because we'd have to build we'd have to get a booth in europe store it probably at our fulfillment center there and then uh have them ship it in and uh which i, I think goes pretty easily but then there's like some weird stuff around german import things and getting getting product into germany can be a huge hassle uh so but again we might have plenty of stuff already in germany so maybe that won't be a hassle so i i think that the door is open and you know if we get to the point where we're just again we're we're incredibly massively successful and uh everything is just humming along we maybe we'll just have an entire marketing and events team that just does this all year round <laughs> Sean, Sean, Sean just volunteered to run the booth with you. So. Oh, okay. okay. Right there. All right. Start of there our we go. Done. <laughs> events team. <Yeah. laughs> Here's a question, Andrew. Uh, well, is James going to have a booth at Essen and stuff? I think he does have English a booth copies. at Essen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to talk to James about that and see if, if, if we want to have any, you know, quiet earthborn presence at the Naylor Games booth. I think that could, yeah. that could work, especially since he'll be selling, uh, since we'll be selling the game through uh, his online store, it might be mm -hmm. good to have it at his booth also. Yeah. But... That could be cool. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. See if there's anything else. Uh, and, and Sophie's uh... in on the booth too. So we're, okay. we're just building a team oh, right man. now. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Uh, the, I think this is maybe the last question. Question, question. Uh, was Imad asked about um, dialogue in Earthborn being fully voiced? similar to like freelancers forgotten waters i'm assuming that one service is kind of what everyone was using i can't remember what it's called well freelancers uh, and forgotten Forteller. waters has their own app do they but then oh, there's, okay. yeah and then there's foreteller it has Forteller, uh, a bunch right. of other games within it yeah we yeah we'd, we'd probably do something like foreteller if we did mm -hmm. like we've, we've talked about this a few times before that it's a little um uh just the sheer amount that we have as well as like our constant expansion has made it a, a little more difficult for us, but it's a, I, I'd, I'd say it's still on in like a possibility. How do you feel? It's come up a lot on game found. I yeah. think it's definitely a possibility. It's, it's pretty low on the priority list uh, for me. Um, mostly because I, I think I just, I w really like it when people have to read out loud. <laughs> um <laughs> And like I like even if you're in a position you're like oh, I don't want to do it oh I don't want to do a voice I think it's really fun and funny for people to do voices and to uh, get past that like that nervousness of reading out loud and just doing it um, I know that there's like but there's an added benefit of doing a recording where it can like help with the atmosphere like if you want to uh, be more immersed um, but. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I have such, I, I think I'd be a giant pain in the ass when it came to approvals on readings. Um, <laughs> uh, it's really hard. I, like doing voiceover stuff. Um, we, we did some of that in the, when I was, you know, working at the digital team and, uh, it can be really hard to get good readings on things. Um, <laughs> so, and that's a lot of text to review and, that that's why Sean in the in the the comments just suggested that you do it. 
Yeah. <laughs> just Andrew's uh, voice. Hello. I mean, I hello. can do it. I don't. I don't know. Like I. I like I said. I. I think. Like when I was at UK Games Expo, listening to people read it out loud, it became clear to me that I was clearly writing this for someone with a British accent, uh, because <laughs> it sounded so amazing to listen to them do their <laughs> do the read alouds. Uh, uh, so I, I might want to. I, I think I'd probably want someone who has a little bit of an accent to do it, because um, it would sound great. I could do it, I suppose. That would be pretty cheap. But then I would then I then I'd have to like get. Then I'd then I'd be scrutinizing my own work, and that's mm -hmm. not that's not any better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just don't make me do it. <laughs> <laughs> we could split it up. We could do it like in a classroom where we're just like, <laughs> you're this character, this character, this character. I'm this yeah. character, this character, and then let me just like, read it like a play. Pretty funny. Yeah, that would. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll look into that stuff. Uh, and Matt actually followed up saying his favorite part is the background music, which oh, I think yeah. you're more interested in doing that, like finding a way to get some music. Yeah, I got an email from somebody that I still need to reply to uh, on that front, which was very exciting because I listened to their music and I was like, oh my god, this is actually really good. Um, but I just haven't oh, gotten to yeah, the email yeah. yet. Um, yeah. Cool. Do you want to get like, I feel like, so we have some listener questions again, but I feel like we've gone, yeah. we've, we've done plenty of Q and a and we're about an hour <laughs> and a half in. So maybe on to, uh, well, we don't have to do Andre's indie game corner, uh, unless he wants <laughs> to, put, unless he's in the chat and wants to put something in the chat. Yeah. Andres, if you're still yeah. there, uh, throw your indie game pick <laughs> into the chat. Yeah. We'll, we'll give you 20 <laughs> seconds. Or actually, no, let's, right. let's, let's outsource this. Give us your indie game corner in the chat mm. to all of you. Put, <laughs> well, put, in, put in your, I can come up with one too. Put, put in your indie to. game Rex into the chat right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one one good, each though. Don't 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 give us a whole list. <laughs> Plus one for French and for Morgan Freeman as Quizzy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird game title. <laughs> I'm about to drink water and <laughs> do a spit take. <laughs> uh oh. so so yeah should we should we do this stuff we're into and yeah uh, let's let's do it let's do it let's do it uh all right yeah what are y'all into let's start with fisher well i am into uh, leaving this country <laughs> <laughs> just in general like <laughs> yeah no reason i'm yeah. also i'm also into that <laughs> i Ooh, um some good uh, i am heading out to New Zealand on Friday. So Sam and I are going to be out there for two weeks. Uh, she has an archaeology conference in Auckland that we're going to. And so we're going to go hang out in Auckland for a week. And then we're <laughs> going to spend the other week in a frantic tour of New Zealand. We're doing a couple North Island stuff and then going down to the South Island. So we're hitting Hobbiton. We are uh, in true Legacy the Ancestors spirit. We are going to be abseiling into a cave and then hiking out over the course of five hours. It's a, like a hundred meter abseil down to this cave. I'm pretty excited for that. That's so cool. I'm fully, I'm fully expecting you to come back from this trip uh, with ideas both for like, like Legacy the Ancestors and stuff for the valley after going to Hobbiton and going down into that cave. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean the cave with the glowworms is so Legacy the Ancestors that yeah. like. I, it, it's going to be pretty good. Uh, then we're going down to the South Island. We're going to do kayaking in the Fjordlands. And then we're doing a hike. We couldn't, the, the great walks uh, were all booked up, unfortunately. The huts for those book up like within the first 15 minutes. But we're going to do, be doing one, uh, we got a, a cool hut, Liverpool hut. We do this hike up through this valley, stay in this hut, and then hike back out again. So it's got some very beautiful views. The only thing I'm nervous about is it's a pretty brutal uphill day the first day. So, uh, mm. uh, you know, I've uh, with the baby, we're not as in shape as we were a couple of years ago. So we'll see how our uh, <laughs> how our glutes are feeling after climbing <laughs> uphill for an entire day. <laughs> nice. That sounds but, awesome. Yeah, it does so sound I'm awesome. Super excited for the trip. We're mostly prepping right now, but that's 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 my my thing I'm into. That's awesome. Awesome. Evan is into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm disappointed to not be able to hear him wax poetic about it. May, hopefully mm -hmm. next time uh, he can be on and tell us all yes. about how great that game is. I think he finished it. That's all I know. It's because he sent me a long thing about it. 
And I was <laughs> like, oh, whoa. So, yeah. that Hopefully next time he'll be on and he can chat about it. Um, Maxine, what about you? What are you into? Uh, well, I just moved like a couple days ago. So uh, I have been very busy. As you can see, like I'm not even fully like my my nook doesn't have all of the things that it usually does. Uh, but uh, I I have been playing a lot of Hell Divers. That game mm, is mm-hmm. so much fun. Uh, I've I heard I, it's I very just, good. It's very good. It's very good, and it's so like goofy and like it's just one of those games you you can't be mad at it. You can never really be mad at it because it's just like, what are you going to do? Um, but I, I've also been playing Dragon's Dogma 2 because it was it was one of the only games I could play without internet uh, during my uh, first night here. So uh, I have a lot of opinions. <laughs> but I know that you've been playing that as well, right? Uh, I have, yeah. I, I, I just, I, it's one of those things, like sometimes I just get a thought in my head about a game and I'm like, I don't need to get that game. <laughs> and then I just I'll just leave it, and I and then I won't get it, and then it'll come up again in my mind. I'm like, eh, you know, should I get that game? No, I don't, I don't, I don't need it. Uh, and then the other morning, I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna get it. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, yeah, so I've been playing a bit of Dragon's Dogma too. I've been enjoying it. Uh, I've not mm-hmm. gotten much opportunity to play, um, so maybe my opinion will change as I get deeper in. But played it for a couple hours, and so far it feels uh, feels pretty good. I'm playing an art, playing as an archer. Mm, um, fun. Mm. yeah yeah it's the enemies get totally like <clears throat> uh like dog piled by my pawns yeah in yeah. combat so it's like i almost <laughs> never have to do anything <laughs> i'm imagining like, that will them. change later on but uh you know for now like i can barely get a shot in because there's no mm. auto there's no like auto lock or anything really i can just you know, i can tap x to fire but does very very little damage if I want to actually do real damage, I have to, you know, stop and aim, and there's no lock on, so I have to move the uh, uh, the analog stick to try to get it, try to get the reticle lined up right. Um, and oftentimes they're dead by the time I get I get the shot prepared. So that's that's not super exciting. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll see how how it goes. But uh, so far, I think it's been pretty fun. It's 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 interesting it's it's not quite like any other rpg fantasy action rpg i've ever played yeah because of the pawns um I it's will almost say like archer... you're, a, you're almost like a, an amoeba of abilities <laughs> moving around mm-hmm. yeah yeah i will say Ar- archer i i also started as an archer i'm not anymore but uh I feel like their damage ramps up significantly once you get a better bow than yeah. like the starting bow. And once you start learning some of the like higher level moves, cause the starting moves are just like so piddly. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's what, that's what I've been, that's what I've been doing. I'm still reading uh, pride and prejudice in, in Spanish. Um, oh, yeah, how's that going? making my way through it. Uh, it's going pretty well, actually. Like, uh, there's a bunch of words that I, you know, that I don't understand, and I need to look up. But then there's, as I've been reading it, um, uh, getting deeper into it, uh, you know, a lot of those same words can c- keep coming up. So, like, hmm. it's reinforcing it to me as I go, which is pretty cool. So I feel like I'm understanding more. Um, and just in general, I feel like my my comprehension and ability to speak Spanish has really been ramped up like this past month or so uh like yes like yesterday we were driving to spanish class and the car died uh just so you know if you have a 25 year if you buy a 25 year old car uh you (laughs) might have issues um so we we, uh we need a new radiator i found that out yesterday but uh i we were on our way to Spanish class, got stuck like outside of this town, uh, you know, called Rachel for help. Um, and then, uh, our friend Yordi came by, uh, to help me out. And, you know, he doesn't really speak, he doesn't speak any in English. Um, so he and I were like working on the car, had to go get some, uh, like antifreeze. Like we were just talking the whole time. Uh, and I understood pretty much everything he was saying, uh, even about the car stuff, which was cool. And then we took it to the mechanic and then I was, participating in the conversation between him and the mechanic and talking about everything 
going on with the car and at the end i was like i i feel like i understand i stole them i was like i feel like i understand maybe like 60 percent of what is going on so like i don't want to make any decisions right now i'll just go home and i'll talk to rachel and then we'll just make sure i that my what i think is going on is what is actually going on <laughs> uh and then i found out that i i did know what was going on so that was very exciting so uh nice. yeah yeah i that feel is. like it's it's kind That's of awesome. yeah it's i feel like i'm doing less uh like internal translating it, the words are just kind mm. of coming in and i'm understanding which is pretty cool that's the cool. first sign of fluency yeah 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 it's neat it's exciting so <laughs> uh so that's been fun yep that's awesome uh yeah, for me, it's been drawing and painting. That's like all I've been doing is just awesome. a lot of drawing. Uh, and uh, it's one of those things that I've always wanted to do more regularly and just more in general. And it's been it's been wild. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, but it's, it's also been interesting because uh, so much of my creative work is 3D. But even 3D wise, I've done so much work character wise so like doing environment work all kinds of things like that is just like it's a unique thing for my brain to to deal with but i've always been the type of person who just jumps into a hobby or like a tool set or anything uh you know and usually when there's like you know i'm like i always like set myself up for these big standards and i <laughs> yeah. do all these things but it's how uh, i feel like i learn best so uh yeah it's been a lot of fun cool i and i think Look. yeah i think it's uh I'd, I'd like to mention uh since we're at the end of the podcast this is when it, when the, all the exciting things happen is that um <laughs> the uh the reason why you've been working on that is because we because <laughs> oh, of the, the game we haven't announced yet still where i i, I told people that we were going to be announcing this game our next game uh you know around or shortly after the conclusion of the game found you know, it's already April now and we haven't announced anything yet. Um, but uh, the the only thing that's really holding back the announcement of the game, honestly, is just the, the look, look of the game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like about uh, three ish, three ish weeks ago, that was my assignment to Corey was because this <laughs> is this is, uh, you know, this is Corey's this is Corey's game in his project uh, that he is uh, the you know brought brought to earthborn when you joined and um i think it's a i think it's a great game uh <laughs> back to our our previous discussion so i think when people play it they're really going to love it uh but it like to make that big announcement i feel like the only thing that's missing right now is like mm -hmm. uh, uh the the look and so we need a, we need at least a key art piece i think mm -hmm. before we can make this announcement so this is all about like trying I'm trying to coax Corey's imagination to like bring forth this. Yeah. Try to try to coax the vision of the look of the game out from the recesses of your imagination. Yes, and I'm I'm rusty. I, <laughs> I even my sculpting's rust. Everything's rusty. It's a different part of my brain that I don't use as much every single day, which is you know actually kind of a bummer. But I, I and now I'm like, like I've been having a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun, and. Uh, yeah, it's been a good time. Awesome. Uh, awesome. So no pressure, obviously. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's going to be waiting, Carl. Now everyone is like, it's been a few days since. Well, now fun. everyone can put their collective goodwill behind you uh, yeah. to like bring this to life. So like, uh, I think maybe you'll feel that you'll feel that from the, from our, from our listeners. <laughs> So yes, you can collect the energy of everyone on the earth like goku's spirit yeah. bomb and yeah. just like yes yes, yes. But... no i'm gonna do it like the creature from that uh what's that stephen king movie where the little <laughs> creature crawls and sucks the air out of you while you sleep <laughs> or whatever you know what i'm talking about very different sleepwalkers yeah. <laughs> through cat's eyes i think is what it's called yeah ben, i think ben the movie was a... sleepwalkers i think or something like that yeah i, I, I don't know walkers I, I thought it was called through cat's eyes that's not the movie that was the though name. No, that's not the movie. That's the book. I don't know. Yeah, I saw that movie in the theater. It's weird. I was a kid when I saw it. No, it gave me nightmares. <laughs> uh, which is why my, my first reaction. Ben has a simple question about this new game. Yeah. Which is, uh, he, he wants us to tell him everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that all? Yeah. Yeah. It's a competitive card game that can be played up to four players. 
and the and the yeah, actually more technically te- as or many more as you want, sure i've only played up to four right. players <laughs> but it's like i think it's one of the it's it's one of the few competitive card games in my experience where i felt like the um the head-to-head was great but also the multiplayer was equally great mm-hmm. yeah and fun for different reasons but not i don't know i feel like like things like multiplayer magic right where it's like a lot of oftentimes you know the multiplayer mode of a of a competitive head-to-head game feels like a tacked on thing or you kind of mm-hmm. need to come to it organically as people just kind of mess around and play with the game yeah. like you know like commander um you have like nicety rules so king making is like not as bad or <laughs> sure, something sure even though yeah. i would argue that's like that is the game that is the game uh, yeah for yeah. a lot of these uh but uh yeah it's uh it's it's really great uh it's super fun and i think uh it will you know speaking to um you know the audience that it has you know back back around to our uh, like the covenant conversation about feeling like a you know like a competitive card game needs to know its audience i feel like it will be service serving an audience that i think is uh is somewhat underserved at the moment so um i agree yeah pretty excited pretty excited Oh man, so many questions. Plus, there's indie games. Oh my gosh, including Sean wants us to do more live podcasts. <laughs> uh, well, it's I, been working out all right, I think. It, yeah, it went pretty yeah, well. It's we've, not we've bad. Got a, we've got a decent number of listeners and engagements. So, yeah. like, and Riverside makes it pretty easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess I could still edit this after the fact and repost it. Yeah. Yeah. I like think we talked about I think I'd be down for doing a live one again. I think that's fun. I, I really have enjoyed the, um, the interaction with the, with the listeners live. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah. Speaking, yeah. Speaking of that, our indie game corner includes Fez, oh, okay. Inscription. Uh, uh-huh. th- there's a few here we've discussed before, like Inscription and um, mm-hmm. Chance of Sonar, which is the kind of translation based one that we've talked yep. about before. We've talked about um, Fez, uh, too, I think, long yeah, I think, ago. I think we have. Uh, uh, somebody mentions Bellatro, which uh, uh-huh. Andres and I uh-huh. have been talking about. But the one that caught my interest is something called Zor. Colon pilgrimage of the slorfs, <laughs> <laughs> which is what a name. It's which like a is Devin really Townsend a... album. I have. Yeah, that does sound like a Devin Townsend album. <laughs> it does. I, honestly, there's some Earthborny vibes about this game. So it's like these little weird creatures, and they're like what traveling this? through this environment, Zor. and it's like a hex-based tactics game, and like. There's, but like some of it's just about survival and getting through it more than combat. And there's like wind that blows you around, and it's you're on this kind of strange alien planet. So, so it's like, kind of like Lemmings a little bit. Uh, a little bit, but more more of a tactics game. It looks like, mm. and there's like card unlocks, like roguelike style card unlocks as you what? kind of make your way through this That's environment. Cool. What's the title so, of this game whoa. again? So I can Google it. Zor, Z O R colon Pilgrimage of the Slorfs. I have never played it. I just I, I just Googled it after somebody mentioned it. So I think since a lot of the other indie game corner uh, wrecks here, uh, we have mentioned before, I don't know if Anders oh. has ever mentioned the Looks Slurps. like the stream went out for a moment. I don't know. Maybe my internet Uh-oh. went a little... No, some people, people in chat are saying it, it, the stream died. Oh, no. Oh, are we... Oh, what the heck? Oh, see, no. we jinxed it. Oh, well. Right... When we said it was going fine. <laughs> well, I think Dang. we're still recording here in Riverside. We're still yeah. recording yes, here in Riverside. So, so we might uh, as well wrap it up here. Yeah, we were so close <laughs> to being done. Let's wrap it up here. This will be the oh, this will be the gosh. bonus. This will be the bonus that people can come back <laughs> if you caught we us live still... and missed it. Uh now you're now you're back here again. <laughs> uh, oh well. Yeah, it's all right okay all right well we can uh well, well Corey yeah. engages yeah. with the chat well let's uh, we just can... wrap it up and then Corey, you can yep. go back to the chat and tell them what's up darn it okay well anyways let's do a wrap wrap a final wrap the full wrap <laughs> uh thank you for joining us people who will watch this recording follow us on social media reach out at info at earthborngames.com if you have any questions and thank you for joining us for our first live stream and it went 99 percent perfectly well <laughs> so almost, almost. here's that last one percent that's right so thank you all for joining <laughs> thanks bye. everyone thanks bye, bye.